So for this particular Boolean algebra, there's some other things that go along with it. Um, one thing that's useful for it would be Boolean expressions and then Boolean, uh, Boolean functions. All right, what's a Boolean expression? Uh, to know what a Boolean expression is, the first thing we need to know is say x is a Boolean variable. Means that x is 0 or 1. All right, that's what a variable is. A variable is, is one of your elements. I'm just not going to tell you what it is. The big thing when people are taking learning algebra for the first time as kids, and all of a sudden you say things like, you know, 3 plus x, and they're like, what in the world? Why did you just put this symbol in there? It's like, I'm, well, they need to be good at numbers and do all the numbers at 100%, never making mistakes in their additions and multiplications and divisions and fractions. Then all of a sudden we start to do this. 3 plus x. Well, what's that x? It's a number. What number is it? Ah, that's the point. I don't know. I shall allow it to be what? All of them. So it represents all of the possible elements of the things that you're talking about. So when we say a variable, it literally does vary. It's anything from negative infinity to positive infinity for college algebra. For Boolean algebra, anything is, is easy. It's 0 or 1, and so we can make a nice little table. 0, 1 as a bit table. On the other hand, if I was talking about propositional logic, it was called a truth table, and it was either T or F. <laughs> An expression, well, what was an expression in college algebra? An expression in college algebra was any possible operator that we know, any possible object of the stuff that we're working with, along with any variable that we want. So for like college algebra, we had things like this. It's the sine of x plus pi minus... 3x cubed plus 2yz over q, right? It's an expression. What's in it? Operators. Sine, plus, power, minus, division, don't care. I have numbers like pi, e, 2, 3, 9, don't care, right? On the other hand, I have variables. What's x? It's a number. What number is it? That's the point. It's a variable. If you're asking me to find it, that's a question. You're asking me, for what values of x caused it? That's a different type of question, but it represents all of the numbers at the same time. For us, our expression is same thing, except we are going to have things like x plus y times z bar <laughs> times 1 plus 0 bar bar. <laughs> right? What do I see? What are the only operators you should see? The and, the v's, and the bridges, right? Your two binary operators and your unary op. Obviously, we need grouping symbols to help us figure out where things go. So an expression is just simply a mixture of variables, bits, ops. Anything of bits, variables, and operations. But this is true for all expressions. right? If we're talking about college algebra, that's the same thing. Except it's not bits, it's real numbers. Any combination of real numbers, variables, and operations. Well, what operations? Well, what operations do you know? So those are expressions. Now, one of the things I notice an expression does, say for example, if I would go through here and look at something like, do a table of x plus y complement 
parenthesis and x complement plus zero. You know, something like that. That is sort of an expression. If I made that into a table, that would be x and y and 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And then I would have to do this x or y, which would be 0, 1, 1, 1. If I would take my x or y and then complement it, that would be 1, 0, 0, 0. If I take my x complement or 0, what does or 0 do? Do the identity laws hold? Yeah, so I can actually leave that off. So it's just x complement, which is 1, 1, 0, 0. You can always short things down in your head. And then if I take this x complement times this, so dot this, I shouldn't, uh, they, it's bitwise, bitwise and. Um, and these two columns, what do you get? Okay, so I have this entire table. But one of the things that I can notice, though, <laughs> is sure, this is the bit table for that expression. But I can notice that if x is 0 and y is 1, this x plus y's complement dotted with x complement plus 0, what does that spit out? 0. One way of looking at this is that I notice that 0, 1 is an ordered pair with under my expression spits out a 0. What do I notice about 0, 0 as an ordered pair? What does it spit out? A 1. What does 1, 0 spit out? What does 1, 1 spit out? Hmm. Things go in. An object, what always comes out? A bit, which is one of my elements. Sounds familiar? Stuff comes in, object comes out. That sounds like a function. So this is a function of what? An ordered pair goes in and out comes a bit. So it ends up being that I could actually define these expressions as being representative and call them functions. And so this would be a Boolean function. First off, b to the n is just simply going to be n-tuples of zeros and ones. Right. If it's 2, it's called an ordered pair. If it's 3, it's an ordered uh, triple. These are all n tuples of zeros and ones. And so if I would say f of x1, x2, up to xn is equal to some sort of expression <coughs> of x1, x2, xn's, so what I'm saying is I have an expression of these particular Boolean variables, but an expression involves operators and bits in those variables. If this is true, this particular function takes a bn tuple and spits out a bit. And we would call this thing a Boolean function of degree n. The degree is, what's the size of the n-tuple going into it? Back to this problem right here. <coughs> Copy. I could say f of x, y is equal to that right there. I could take that expression and notice that I only have two variables in it. This is a function of degree 2. And we know things like, okay, not only that, what was f of 0, 0 from above? Where did 0, 0 go? 
1. And f of 1, 0 was the same as f of 0, 1, which was the same of f of 1, 1. All those evaluated to 0. That's me being lazy. You're supposed to do them all separate, but since they're all 0, I'm just say they're all 0. And we found that well, by what? By the table, or we could just simply go through there and ask. We can actually kind of reason it out, right? Let's see if we can do it under reasoning. When is the only time the dot returns 1? If, they're both, if both. If both would be what? 1. one. one. All right. So when is that going to be a 1? When x plus y is a 0, because I'm, I'm having a complement, right? So the only way that this left side could be a 1 would be if x plus y would be 0. When's the only time x plus y is 0? When they're both 0. And let's look at this guy. When's he, when is he 1? When x bar is 1, which means x is 0. So the left side says both x and y need to be 0. The right-hand side says x needs to be 0. Put that together. That means x and y need to be 0. Every other time, what are we going to get? 0. Okay, with just the verbal reasoning of why this actually happened, of what the table represents. We can be, go through these things and still talk about domination and identities and all these other properties. The five are only necessary. Now, on the other hand, here's a kind of an interesting question. If you were given f of x1, x2, up to xn is given, and then you make a table, that means I would have x1, x2, up to xn. And I make this table. Eventually, over here, I'm going to have the function f if I evaluate everything. How many rows does this have? Why? Why are there two to the n rows? <coughs> How many possibilities are there for x1? Two. Two. How many possibilities for x2? Two. Two, right? So if I'd make it, it would be 2 times 2 times 2. Because to make this table, I have to do both combinations for the first and both combinations for the second. And so I'm going to have 2 to the n rows. Now, irregardless of what function I have, let's say it starts off with 0, 0 to 0 and ends with 1, 1 to 1. Irregardless of your n tuples, every row represents an n tuple. That n tuple goes into the function. What does it spit out? A 0 or a 1. So whatever function you have, if I plug in zero, all zeros here, it's either going to spit out a 0 or a 1. What's it going to go to the next one? It'll be a 0 or a 1 all the way down to a 0 or a 1. So a function just says I would actually create the function and then figure out what are the zeros and ones. Now, given that, though, how many possible functions actually exist in table form? How many tables exist total? Well, how many rows do I have? Two to the n rows. So one way I could make my function is to not give you the expression, right? That's actually that's an ex expression here. I could just simply say, you know what? I'm lazy. It's 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, dot, 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 1. Right? Just, just give me all the zeros and ones. That, that's the function, right? This n tuple becomes 0. The next n tuple becomes 0. The next n tuple becomes 1. The next n tuple becomes 1. That's a function. What is it doing? I'm just doing an arrow diagram. So one way for me to do that would be just to simply write down every possible 0 or 1 combination for 2 to the n rows. 
Well, how did I do that? I picked 0 or 1. There's two ways for me to do that. Pick a 0 or pick a 1. Then what do I do? Go to the next row below. How many ways for that? Two ways, and I keep on going down until I have picked all my zeros and ones. Once I've done that, I've made my function. Okay. It's like, well, what's the expression? Do you really need to know it? <laughs> if I've told you this n tuple becomes this bit, and this n tuple becomes this bit, did you really need the expression? No, it's just a pairing. But on the other hand, what does that mean? The cardinality of all of these functions is what? Two times two times it is two. Two to the n, which ought to look familiar. We've run into this before. But that tells us that the total number of functions that ever exists is finite. But what are expressions? Any combinations of variables and operators. How many of those exist? A countably infinite number of them. But that would tell me that I have lots and lots and lots of repeats. This expression is the same as this expression because it gives me the exact same table. So next section, what we're going to do is we're going to say, if I gave you the function, could you find an expression of a particular form that would spit out that function? All right, that's it.